Bank of China faces a daily fine of $50,000 in the United States unless it complies with a court request to give details of customers accused of selling fake goods. Joining me down the line to discuss is Paul Kilmer, an expert in trademark, copyright and unfair competition law. Paul, how did this come about? Why now? The lawsuit that uh, resulted in this particular fine was originally brought in 2010 by Gucci, Yves Saint Laurent, and a number of other luxury goods against a couple of counterfeiters in China. Uh, so the luxury goods manufacturers began this lawsuit as a result of that. And later, to try to grab some of the assets of the counterfeiters, uh, they brought in the Bank of China. Uh, the Bank of China's position, of course, is that by allowing the plaintiff's access to some of the financial information and accounts and records of the counterfeiters that the Bank of China might be violating Chinese law. Well, absolutely. And the bank has also said that the judge lacks jurisdiction over them. So is this the case? And what problem does this represent for piracy issues across borders? That U.S. courts are much more amenable uh, to assisting in anti-counterfeiting efforts than at least some courts and administrative agencies in China. The situation has changed a bit over time and perhaps in, on the China side has improved, especially in the higher courts and it, it also in the administrative enforcement arms of the Chinese government. However, it is still a far from perfect situation. Shouldn't it be down to the Chinese government to crack down more heavily on this issue? There's no question about that. I would note parenthetically, though, that the Bank of China is largely controlled by the government. Part of the instrumentality used by the Chinese government to project uh, economic strength and power abroad. How can piracy impact a brand? The goods that were sent to the U.S. by the counterfeiters uh, were substandard. So not only did Gucci and the rest lose profits, but their goods were transported to the U.S., used on the streets, and in some cases falling apart uh, to the eyes of, of the average consumer walking down the street. That sort of situation tarnishes the brand. Frankly, it erodes confidence of uh, U.S. companies in having their products sourced from China. Well, in general now, and how does China view IP issues? Because I remember back when I was in China during the Olympics in 2008 in Beijing and Shanghai, they had to begin with a lot of DVD shops that sold fakes. But during the time when a lot of foreigners came to these two cities, they were shut down. But as soon as the Olympics were over, they just were opened again. That is still the case. It is very, very difficult to police counterfeits, not only in China, but the counterfeits exported from China elsewhere uh, to Africa, places like Nigeria, which has notorious counterfeiting markets full of counterfeit goods uh, made in China. Economically speaking, how big an industry for China is Shanxi, which is imitation and the piracy of name brands? One estimate I have seen is something just north of $20 billion a year, although I have seen estimates that are substantially higher than that. There's really no accurate tracking of this level of counterfeiting. And as I indicated, a lot of the counterfeit goods are now sold outside of China in physical and online markets. Now, a recent official report said that only 58.7% of items in online trades were genuine or of good quality last year, with the remaining 40% shoddy or counterfeit. Surely this is quite a setback for the country's burgeoning e-commerce industry, or do the profits compensate for the negative reputation? Sites like Alibaba and AliExpress and others in China are suffering uh, as a result of this, not so much within China, where they have a tremendous online market, but outside of China. Do you think there is enough incentive for China to crack down on piracy? I think there's beginning to be, and there are certain Chinese brands that are now becoming fairly well known or have been fairly well known uh, outside of China. Jack Ma certainly has a significant interest now in trying to protect his Alibaba brand abroad. And there are other examples like that. 
So there is some desire within the Chinese business community uh, to prevent counterfeiting and other forms of infringement. Pressure is constantly being brought, not only by private lawsuits like the Gucci action in New York, uh, but also by threats of actions before the World Trade Organization and other bodies against uh, Chinese counterfeiting and infringement. Uh, so there are those incentives as well. Uh, also, of course, China would like to be part of broader trade arrangements, uh, such as the Trans-Pacific Partnership, to which it was not uh, invited or did not participate. And it would like to get uh, involved in more of those sorts of deals. And in order to do that, this is one of the factors that it has to address.